The Q3 Sportback is marginally longer, lower and, weirdly, narrower than the car on which it's based. It has a tiny bit less boot space, and right now Model 4 model costs around £1,150 more than the equivalent Q3. Think Porsche Cayenne Coupe, BMW X6 or Mercedes GLE or GLC Coupe, a less practical, more expensive, arguably more stylish and supposedly better to drive version of an existing family SUV. The Q3S directly rivals the BMW X2, Range Rover Evoque, Jaguar E-Pace, and TG's favorite small SUV, the Volvo XC40. Like those cars, the Q3S is going to be popular. Of course it is. Audi reckons it will account for a third of all Q3 sales here in the UK, but we can easily see it doing far bigger numbers than that. And, don't forget, SUVs are getting more popular with every passing year, Audi also says it expects demand for compact subs like the Q3S to swell by 40% over the next five years. It arrives in the UK this autumn, with a choice of petrol and diesel four-cylinder engines, manual and S-tronic, double-clutch automatic gearboxes and front and four-wheel drive. One model, the 35T FSI with the auto gearbox, gets new 48-volt mild hybrid technology that gives a temporary power boost and marginal economy gains. Prices start at £32,440 and rise to just shy of £50,000. Yep, that's £50,000. The Q3 Sportback is not a bad car, but it's not a brilliant one either. Audi should be commended for maintaining much of the regular one's practicality, so if you're happy to pay the extra for the added style, you won't feel hard done by. It's just a pity it's no more interesting to drive than a normal Q3, its looks make promises its chassis doesn't keep, that the gearbox is so recalcitrant, and the ride on the standard suspension is a bit bobbly. Interior tech and standard equipment is good, but quality is mixed. Two engines are available from launch, the 2.0-litre 45T FSI petrol and 2.0-litre 40TDI diesel. The former makes 227 brake horsepower and 258 pounds-feet, and the latter 187 brake horsepower and 295 pounds-foot both get quattro four-wheel drive and seven-speed double-clutch automatic gearboxes, while the 1.5-litre 35T FSI petrol, which is coming at the end of 2019, can be had with front-wheel drive and a six-speed manual. Do that, though, and you miss out on the mild hybrid system, a first for Audi, and indeed the VW Group, in such a small car, though similar systems are fitted to the A6, A7, A8 and so on. The 35T FSI with the 7-speed auto, is the only Q3 Sportback to get this 48-volt mild hybrid setup, which uses a belt alternator starter to recover energy lost while braking and coasting. It also means the stop the start system, which is active from 13 miles per hour, feels super smooth, and that the car can coast with the engine switched off at speeds of between 24 and 99 miles per hour to save fuel. It is possibly the best Q3 Sportback, at least of the three we've tried, though the engine itself doesn't feel quite as pleasant as it does in a Golf. The powertrain responds more keenly than either of the 2.0 liters, thanks to the small e-boost, and it feels more agile because there's less weight over the nose. The 45 TFSI and 40 TDI's engines are fine in isolation, quiet and smooth. But neither feels as quick as Audi's figures, 0 to 62 miles per hour in 6.5 seconds and 8.3 seconds respectively, suggest. The gearbox is to blame. The 7-speed dual-clutch auto changes gear smoothly and swiftly, but it's so reluctant and slow to kick down that opportunistic overtakes and merging onto motorways require real forward planning. It feels like it's always looking to shift into the highest possible gear, rather than the correct one. Sixth happens at a little over 30 miles per hour. So you're always three gears and a couple of seconds away from the power. Manual mode, using the paddles on the back of the wheel, allows for much smoother progress. All Q3 Sportbacks get sportier suspension than the regular Q3, and you can spec adaptive dampers should you wish. Cars so equipped are more comfortable, retaining their composure over broken surfaces where the standard setup gets a bit bobbly. But no Sportback is especially good to drive, they handle accurately and make the most of their relatively compact dimensions, but there is no interaction and thus, limited fun to be had. At least they are quiet and composed on the motorway. Oh, and you can have an off-road mode that adds hill descent control. We're not sure why either.
Despite the more rakish roof line, Audi claims the Sportback is just as practical as the regular Q3. Indeed, changes to the rear seats, which slide backwards and forwards by 130mm in a 60-40th split, mean head and legroom remain entirely reasonable for actual adults. If you're 6 foot tall, your head won't touch the roof even if you're sat up straight, and your knees probably won't touch the back of the front seat. The boot is decent too, bigger than the BMW X2 and Mercedes GLAs, but smaller, with the rear seats in place, than the Range Rover Evoque, Jaguar E-Pace or Volvo XC40s. The Q3 SS dashboard is identical to the regular Q3s, meaning quality isn't quite up to normal Audi standards. It's an odd mix in here of brittle plastics and the more tactile soft-touch stuff. High-spec cars get bits of contrast Alcantara, bit weird, but does brighten up the play somewhat. Analog dials are a thing of the past, all Q3 SS get the excellent virtual cockpit, though lesser specs make do with a 10.25 inches display, while pricier ones get the full 12.3 inches screen. They all get the 10.1 inches MMI infotainment screen though, which gives you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, plus the option to subscribe to services like Amazon Alexa.